Welcome back to another video in the series, Cribs of Conan. In today's video, I am going to be taking you on a tour of Commander Riker's base. So stay tuned. So today's video will be voiceover commentary as the original audio with my talking and exploring this base of Commander Rikers. It had the rain in the background and all the ambient noises you could hear and it was really hard along with the music and I hadn't realized that I could turn those settings down. <laughs> so we're looking at Rikers Pagoda that he made and then this brown monstrosity that you see are the stables that I made, he let me make to put all of his animals and pens in and we'll get to that a little later. Before going any further though, I'm going to address the elephant in the room of this beautiful pagoda and as you've seen from the cinematics and I'm going to zoom in here, there's one panel missing and that's not Commander Riker's fault. That is my own fault. When he made this, it was perfect. And then when I placed 
all of his stations and things that he had inside the pagoda, I had to take out one of the beams. And because of that, I lost the foundation or the footing, the security to have that panel. And that's, I, I've tried everything I could to make it work and it, it didn't work without it looking really jinky. So that's because of me, not him. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate because it was a really, it was a work of art. I was really impressed with this. So the brown monstrosity that you see behind the pretty pagoda, I made that. Uh, Commander Riker had all of his thralls and pets and all of his workstations out in this area to the side of his pagoda that you see. And he's, he, after he was done completing the pagoda, he peaced out. He was done. <laughs> I'm like, you're just going to leave it? He's like, yep. And so I'm like, well, do you mind if I, you know, make some stalls and, you know, put the, your stuff in the inside? He's like, yeah, go for it. Cause he could care less. So I thought I, I'll make some custom stalls for his pens, animal pens and all. And it just turned into a hot mess. <laughs> So you'll have a tour of the inside of that monstrosity in, in, in just a second. But it was nice to have this area with his dancers that you'll see that are inside of his pagoda. They used to be outside there and there was a wolf. Uh, and sometimes more, it, the wolf would be a one star. But even if it wasn't a one star, when I would run this course and we'd pass by this pagoda on the course of leveling up all of my characters, uh, my thralls and my, my pets. And sometimes if we got too close to that wolf and my characters were lower level, I'd, I'd run towards the, the dancers and they were all badasses and would help kill the wolf off before my, my uh, thrall or my pet got killed. So this giant building that houses all of his stables and animal pens and pets, I made not in God mode and that was hard. It's, it's, I tried, I would do stairs to get height, but then I'd have to prop them up. It was just, it's really tedious to build in this game. Uh, Planet Coaster spoils me building in that game. And then to be honest, the other survival games that I enjoy building in are Valheim and then Icarus and then Conan. I mean, I enjoy building in Conan, but it is a challenge in not in God mode, but even in God mode, sometimes you're all like, you can't manipulate the terrain. And so you've got to figure out how to make, you know, everything flush and everything like that, you know, the foundation flush. So, but yeah, this was, it was a struggle. I mean, I had a, a vision. It didn't quite turn out how I wanted this to turn out, but, and, and this will be the first time for Commander Riker to see this. So I hope he <laughs> is okay with what I did. I think it would have been, the roof would have been easier had I done it in God mode, but it is what it is. So it honestly doesn't matter which direction you're coming from. As soon as this pagoda renders in day or night, doesn't matter what time of day it really is, it's gorgeous. But it really is stunning at night too. I, I've done a couple runs with my characters at nighttime and when this renders in it just it never failed to catch my breath it really is gorgeous so now we see some of commander Riker's named thralls that he has posted outside of his pagoda and here we see Nakano and she is a badass I like when he would bring her on missions with us especially with the red mother Nakano is a badass character and fighter and here the entertainers greet us as we walk into the pagoda and I totally forgot that one of them's their name was Magic Mike <laughs> Some of the names that we all named our characters were so freaking hilarious. Had me laughing. There's a total of four levels of in this pagoda. This is the first level, and now we're going to go on to the second level. And on the second level, I put all of his workstations up there. So over here, I placed all of Riker's, Commander Riker's furnaces. And then over in this corner, I put all of his artesian benches and alchemy benches. Dyer's bench. Artesian bench. 
And then in this corner, I put his Tinker's Bench. And then over here is the tanning area. And then the carpentry's be Carpenter's Bench. And then the Blacksmith's. I do feel bad. Commander Riker gave me permission to decorate the inside of his pagoda. And after I was done placing all of his rawls in there and his stations in there, I just, I was burned out and needed a Conan break. Next, we're going up to the third level. And on the third level, I put all of his circle of power and some burial mounds and try to make it as cohesive up here with all of this theming as I could. I haven't used the circle. I haven't used any of these things. I've placed them in my own place, but I don't know what they do. And I, the sacrificing tables and stuff, I really wasn't into them, but I use them as decoration. Next up, we're going to the last floor in the pagoda, which is where I placed his temple of Emir. And from when it was placed outside, it didn't look so big, but then I got it in here and it was really big. And yeah, yeah. It's, and then you'll see where the pillar is missing and that missing pillar to fit this temple in, it made that last little piece on the outside of the pagoda missing, which really sucks. For those that don't play Conan, I'll explain why I have two elevators. Is I think it's really cool that they have elevator elevators. They have uh, vertical and horizontal ones. They also have fast elevators, but what they don't have are elevators that stop at each level that you create. That would be really dope as fuck, not gonna lie if they had that, but they don't. So wherever you put the ending is where it goes. So I had to, I couldn't get it stopping on, on each floor, unfortunately. So that's why you see some, um, on the second, third, and uh, second, third floors, two elevator shafts or two um, elevator things that I'll get off on one and go on to the other one. Before heading out, we're taking a closer look at his cooking area where I put all of his cooking stations and then looking up at the pillars and the inside of the pagoda. So now we are going towards the stables and I put his statues, like the trophies of the green dragon trophy, as well as the red mother trophy on the outside of the stables. They're huge. And oh, getting the red mother, fighting her a couple times. So we each had a trophy. How oh, that was fun. <laughs> Brings back a lot of fun memories. And then here we have more named fighters. Now the difference between named fighters and uh, Magic Mike, the performer, is Magic Mike wasn't a named performer or a named character, but these guys are named fighters. And they're higher levels when you, without having to level them up, but then leveling them up, they get even stronger and more badass. And now we'll go inside of this monstrosity of stable, stable building that I made for Commander Riker to put his animals and all in. And I did this not in God mode. So I did a lot of grinding to make all of this. And here is Moto Moto, the really cool rhino that you can ride. So I placed his well inside of the stables and then I put his preservation boxes in here as well. Uh, simply because of the fact that he put all of his captured cubs in here, captured baby animals that he's captured in his time in Conan. So I thought appropriate to be in here. So if you want to place them down or put them in pens to have them grow up and to become adult thralls or adult pets, this, it would be wise to have it in here rather than in the pagoda. The beehives and the compost heap here as well so that not only his animals, but his thralls can have food. I like the names that he named his his thralls and his pets. Uh, like we had Baloo, the, the bear in common. I need one of my bears, Baloo, but he also named them some really cool names. And it was fun getting to know him through how he named his his characters and his, his pets and stuff. And just a different side that I didn't see of him which is really cool that sometimes gaming brings that out. You get to know like, oh, why did you do this? And we have that creative thing in common. You just saw a little corridor with planters that I placed seeds in uh, that I've collected so that he could have some 
plants that he could harvest and grow for various recipes. Going back towards the center or main area of the stables, we're gonna go into a room and in this room I put the saddler's workshop or workbench in. I thought that would be appropriate here since he has his horse stables in here as well. And then we'll see the Wheel of Pain. It's the smaller, it's not the greater one. But I put that in here. And we'll see more pets of his. And I'll go into Magneto mode. <laughs> I always, whenever I go into this mode, I think of Magneto from X-Men. So I can get a better look at the names. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of these <laughs> names that he named them. I can say Pumbaa though. <laughs> and I liked that he named his uh, boar Pumba. Very fitting. I made a little storage room with storage boxes and crates that he could put things in. Moving on down to the opposite wing inside the stables, we come across Julius the Rhino in his pen hanging out. And we see a couple horses. There is Riker's friend Epic's horse, Chocolate X. And I'm not gonna pronounce Riker's horse's name only because I will butcher it. I don't want to offend anyone, but it doesn't mean anything bad uh, in, ja in Japan. Uh, it means running or run or fast. And so he named it according to that. So I added another well in this part of the stables along with a couple more preservation boxes to use however to put whatever he wanted to put in here. And I had some other little walkways and stuff to place more thralls or pets or decorate it however he wanted or just to walk around. And then we come around the back side of where Pumbaa is. And that completes the inside tour of the stables. I put some hanging braziers for lighting, but that's about it. There's a lot of potential for more clutter and decorative items to be placed in here if Commander Riker so chooses to add more to it. One last thing I wanted to show y'all before ending the video. This was the inspiration behind the Great Wall of Smiling that I made. If you look over here in this direction is where Trisha's base is, her first base. And then over here, you'll see the aqueducts in the distance. And on top of those aqueducts is my base. So he placed a vertical elevator that goes all the way to the top of the Shattered Bridge, part of the Shattered Bridge that spans across the entire map of Conan Exiles. And as you go up, it gives you some amazing uh, panoramics and scenic views of the pagoda, which I really like. And at the top of the bridge, there is, I don't know if it's a, necessarily a lore stone or if it's just an information stone that tells you about, a, you know, this area. And I put some, uh, before he just had it on top so you could actually fall off of it. So I put like a little wall so you wouldn't fall off and then stairs and then another vertical bridge that goes down to the Great Wall of Smiling. The animal pen that you see down below isn't part of Commander Riker's base, but actually part of Trisha's base that she placed over here. But her base is on the other side of this shattered bridge and you'll see that in next month's video. But that wraps up today's tour of Commander Riker's base. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked what he had made and what I added to it. Leave Commander Riker a comment, please, letting him know what you think of his dope pagoda and anything else that you want to say about today's video. Thank you for joining me. And until next month's video where we will tour Trisha's bases, I wish you all a great month, peace, love, and blessed be. Bye, y'all.